Hey, welcome to Friday Night Chats with me, your host, Garage Geek. It's been an interesting week. So I live in Los Angeles, as you probably know, and the weather has been very strange this week, right? It's been so hot every day. It's like we need air conditioning, but then we kept having blackouts. I think I complained about this in my last video. So the, the, the electricity would go out, but only for like, 15 to 30 seconds and then we'd be back on it would be just enough to be annoying so all that you know continued happening this week the the blackouts were fewer though but it's still been very very hot and then um as of today it's sprinkling like it just started at around four o'clock but it's just again just enough to be annoying right it's not really raining there's just little drops coming down and it's still really hot so i'm really hoping that we get rain this weekend we need it i think we need it to cool things down and it would just be a nice change of pace so yeah the weather's been interesting and this week was um, only a four-day week for for teachers right i'm a teacher and so we had Monday off, which was so nice, and then a four-day week. And, um, you know, I don't know if you heard, but Los Angeles, I work in LAUSD, Los Angeles Unified School District, and they had a huge hacker attack or something. And it started last Thursday, but then when I got to school on Tuesday, they were like, you have to change your password. So luckily I found that out before school started because once everybody got there, they all, all the teachers, all the staff, everyone had to change their emails, their passwords. And then the, the whole system was like shut down. Like we couldn't do anything. We couldn't take attendance. Um, we couldn't, like so many teachers couldn't log in, they couldn't change their passwords. And not only that, students, no student could. And getting the passwords changed was every single student almost needed individual help in every single class. So you can imagine, right? And so I have, you know, I had my lesson plans already. I knew what I was doing had to scrap everything because I, I do everything on the computer with my kids. Like even when they are writing, we type it on Google Docs, right? Because they the, our students have free Google accounts. And so we couldn't use any of that. And so I, I tell my kids not to bring their textbooks because we have an online version and the textbook's heavy. So I'm like, why would they carry it? They can keep that home and ref at home and reference it. And then we use the online version in class. Well, of course we couldn't do that. So we didn't have access to textbooks that was my own fault right um so it was a very interesting week right so getting through every class i'd be like hey does everybody have access yet and even the classes when there were there were like four kids who didn't it's not fair that i do a lesson right with everybody on the computer and for no fault of their own like four kids can't get on that's just not fair all right so we did a lot of old school activities right where a lot of grammar this week where I would put sentences up on the board and we would, you know, break them down. Subjects, verbs, prepositional phrases, sentence types like simple compound, complex, all that stuff. I teach, I'm teaching ninth grade, right? So when it comes to grammar, a lot of kids, that's where they have the biggest gaps in their knowledge. So I tried to try to use this week to fill in some of those gaps. So it was an interesting week. So I'm glad that almost all of those problems are done now leosd is making us use an extra form of uh of verification to log in like they'll they'll send us texts and these kind of things so it's it's been um an interesting week uh in los angeles for the heat and for the hacking and all that stuff and i guess i guess this was a huge hacking deal because it made nationwide news it was it was that big I'm gonna go ahead and take a, a sip of my coffee. So that's my week, what's been going on. Uh, I didn't watch too much TV this week, except um, I'm watching this show called Evil. It's on Paramount. It was on another streaming platform before that. I'm not sure which one, it might've been Amazon Prime for two seasons. And then it moved to Paramount. And this is a show I really like. It's kind of like uh, a supernatural type show, 
where you have a couple of characters and they're dealing with um, church, spiritual issues, and it's kind of like X-Files, right? Trying to also debunk, like, is, is there really demonic involvement or um, is this being faked? And it, it's, it's interesting in that way because uh, I really think it's interesting because one of the characters is Muslim and uh, the main character who I really like, he's the reason why I started watching the show, is Mike Coulter. Right, Mike Coulter was on um, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones first, and Luke Cage, and also The Defenders. So, if you haven't seen um, Jessica Jones, the first season, wow, that's a good show. Even if you don't like superhero movies or shows, you really should watch that one. It's so good. But anyways, Mike Coulter then did Luke Cage and The Defenders. Um, so then he's in this show, and there are three, basically three main characters, and there's... Um, kind of lawyer she's who's not religious sorry did I say not religious not religious atheist I think I combined those two words and then you have Mike Coulter who is uh, become trying to become a priest so we have the Catholic Church and then we have a Muslim character who if they try to ascribe religious aspects to it approaches it from a different religious point of view which I think it's really interesting. It adds something different and unique to this show uh, because they, they involve the two religions there. Um, and so I, I, I think that's kind of interesting. And I mean, they deal with other issues as well, right? But, you know, that, that's a major thing. So anyways, that's on Paramount. And it's on its third season. And what I noticed is when it moved to Paramount, wow, they, like, up the factor. There's more nudity. There's swearing. There's... there's it, it really... it. It didn't change a lot, but you could totally see the shift moving from one platform to the other and what was allowed versus what wasn't. And so that was an interesting change. I recommend this, the show. If you're into those kind of shows like Supernatural or X-Files or Fringe, you might check out um, Evil. Um, it's on its third season, but each season only has like 10 episodes. So uh, I, I recommend it. So what's been going on with YouTube? So I took part in a couple contests. So what the gym who did a space theme contest. So he's a, a young guy from Britain and um, his contest is over now. I did an entry. It was a fun, fun contest. I've been, I've been enjoying watching all the entries. In fact, I, he made a playlist and I need to go and check to make sure I haven't missed any. But he said he got like 31 entries, but I've seen I've seen a bunch of them. And so he was going for 200 subscribers and he got over 200. He got 256. So so that was good. And he he did his um, winner contest this morning. And as soon as I woke up right, I was supposed to jump in the shower. But I saw the notification for that video and I went ahead and watched it. I didn't win, but that's not the point, right? The, the point of these contests is for me isn't to win any money. It's just to become more involved and with the vinyl community and other communities, but also hopefully that other people can see my videos and then they might wanna um, check out my content, right? To help my channel grow. Now, something else that's been going on with my channel, which is, which is I'm, I'm not sure how to take this, right? So I've been trying to do different things to get more people to view, to view my channel. And so I've, I've done a couple of clips. I've done shorts. And then I also did a couple of clips of, I did uh, Warren Zevon, I did Olivia Newton-John, early TV appearances, and then I did The Carpenters. And the Olivia Newton-John one did well, but this Carpenter one is like blowing up. It's got already 2,000 views. And I've gotten 18 comments. And that's great, but I'm wondering if this is the way I want my channel to go because for example when I make a clips video all of that is copyrighted so I could get a copyright strike that's number one number two I don't think I think because I, I don't know the rules f exactly but I think because it's copyrighted I don't get the hours toward my um, monetization and that's not really my goal but it's it's a fun goal to work toward right monetization and so when I get 2,000 views on a video like this, a lot of people, 
I shouldn't say a lot. Some people uh, subscribe because of it. But then I notice, like, if I don't do another Carpenter's video or if I don't do something similar, right, I'll lose those subscribers. And so I've seen my channel go up because of these videos, but then they go down again. And right now I'm at 197 subscribers, which is so awesome. I really have been wanting to be at 200 for a while. And I think I got about 10 subscribers because of this Carpenter's video. And I'm worried that I could really easily lose those subscribers and for me every subscriber at this point counts because i i'm not going to post another carpenters video like i might you know do some other type of of singer clips and then i gotta ask myself do i want to do that because this could actually harm my channel right and i don't want to get to the point where i have so many copyright strikes that they could um and they're not strikes i meant copyright um notifications that i could actually get a strike and so one of one of my, my followers wrote to me in a comment like hey if you keep if you keep the audio that you use to 10 seconds and under and video clips to 30 seconds and under i think that's what he he wrote then you shouldn't really get a copyright strike and I, and i tried that yesterday with a video i'll talk about that in a minute i did it i kept it under i tried to keep the video clips under 20 seconds and the audio to 10 seconds and under and it wasn't hit for a copyright. So I'm wondering, like, I, I really need to stick to that. So that, that's something I'm thinking about. Like, wh where do I go with this? Like, do I want to keep making clips just so I can get, uh, you know, 2,000 views on one video that really isn't in line with where I want to go? And not to say that I don't enjoy the clips because I actually make these clips because... You know, I like going on different videos and seeing, you know, the older singers and putting them together without having to watch a whole bunch of videos. And I, I appreciate when someone else does that. It's like a lazy man's way. I should say a lazy person's way of watching a whole bunch of videos and just clips. I enjoy them. And so um, I'm just but I'm just wondering, is this going to end up hurting my channel rather than helping it? Um where am i going like in you with youtube this week um i so i thought of an idea so i i watched a youtuber's video uh i don't know a couple maybe like two months ago right and he he was doing um a best of the year list of albums and i seriously hadn't heard any of the albums and so i was like okay this is a shame like so this this guy this youtuber I, i'm sorry i don't remember his name I, i'm gonna look that up but when when i do the video i'm talking about i'm definitely gonna um you know mention his name and, and flash it on the screen but he's recommending the all these albums as his top albums of the year and i haven't heard i maybe i heard of one or two but so many of them i'm like well obviously he has a different style of music but if he's saying that these are his favorite albums of the year then I should listen to them. So I made a list and I put them all into a Spotify list. And I wrote him like, hey, I'm gonna listen to these albums. I'm gonna let you know what I think. So what I would do is I was I would listen to them and after a week or so, every time I listened, kept listening, I would eliminate songs that I didn't really like so I could pare down the list and I would keep keep listening to it. And then I finally went back, it was like a month and a half later and I wrote him the songs that I liked and why and you know thanked him for the for making the suggestion because i wanted him to know like hey you know your uh recommendations did have an impact and i'm listening to these and these were the songs that i really liked and of course it's subjective but isn't that the point of one of those videos right you want to share your ideas and then hopefully someone can take some of those uh recommendations and you know actually listen to them and and s see if they like it so then i thought well you know what almost every video that the vinyl community is making they're recommending uh music to people and it's overwhelming right because if you watch a lot of v vc uh recommendation videos i mean there's you're gonna get 10 albums minimum in one video and so i decided hey you know be a little bit strategic about it pick one per video and what I did was I recorded the short section of the video where the person was recommending and why. 
And then I made a playlist this week of five different recommended albums. And then after listening to all the music on repeat for a week, I was going to review each album. I was going to show the video clip of the original recommendation and then talk about what I thought. And I would never be negative. Like if I really didn't like something, I wouldn't, you know, obviously say it's, you know, that review or stupid. Like, no, I just have a different taste in music, but this would be why I didn't like it. And da, da, da. But none of the ones that I listened to this week were bad. I, I enjoyed them all for different reasons. But so that's the video I'm working on. But I'm, I'm wondering, do I, do, do you think I need to like write to each of the five people and say, hey, I'd like to use this clip uh, and get their permission before I do it? I, I actually think that's what I need to do. I was thinking, well, you know, I've seen other people use clips in their videos, but I think I should write them and ask before I just do it. Even though YouTube is a public platform and we're allowed to use it. So just, you know, maybe someone doesn't want me to use the video clip. And in that case, I would just say, hey, this person recommended this, and this is why I wouldn't include the video clip. So I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. But if you have any thoughts on that, would you please leave them in the comments? I'd love to know what you think about that. All right. Um, I want to talk about the Friday night chat. So I'm making this Friday night chat. right? And so this is my third time. And uh, the first one I did got 58 views. And the second one I did is 43 views. And so obviously I want this to grow and I understand listening to someone just rant and rave for the 30 minutes or so, and especially my first one was 40, 45 minutes, I think. I mean, that's not always someone's cup of tea, right? But of course I, I would love people to be along with me to, to, you know, to listen to what I have to say. Hopefully what I have to say is interesting. So I, you know, I, and I'm not doing this just because I want views, right? I'm doing this because this is something that I'm, you know, I'm generally interested in sharing, it's, you know, the end of a long week. And I just, you know, kind of want to put my thoughts out there. And even if I just get a couple of people, let me finally take a drink. I keep moving it up in the way. Even if I get a couple people to, to talk about it and respond, I mean, that's good enough, right? But of course, I would like this, this to grow. All right. So I talked about, I have a little list of notes of what I need to go through. Evil, YouTube with the gym, the carpenters, the Friday night chats. All right. So let's go ahead and talk. Oh, one more thing I did in YouTube. So this, this week in YouTube, I started a new series. I actually, during COVID, I collected a lot of crap. Okay. So I, for some reason, I think that's, that was my response to COVID, right? I just, I, I would be beyond like the apps like offer up and, and whatnot and Craigslist and people, if they were getting rid of things cheap, I would go and get it. Like I, I amassed so many VHS tapes and so many, like so much stuff. And then at the end of COVID is like my, my space out here, which this is the only place I can put my stuff was so jammed and overcrowded. I just had to get rid of it all. And it was, it was sad, but I was like, I guess that was my personal uh, reaction to COVID was, I don't want to say hoarding. I wasn't hoarding, right? But it was, it was something similar. I was just like collecting stuff. And then I had to break myself of that. And thank goodness I couldn't spread out into my house, right? I had to keep everything in my garage. And that kind of kept it under wraps a bit. But anyways, that whole little story was, was leading up to, I went to one person's house who was moving and I guess he worked for Paramount Studios as the, the designer of the DVD packaging. And so he had like boxes, I mean, huge boxes and boxes full of movies that weren't open. The, every time he designed one, the studio would send it to him free and he never watched them. And so he was moving and he wanted to get rid of all of these and I went through and I grabbed so many of the classic movies, especially ones that I'd never seen before. And he gave me a deal. I bought a hundred movies for a hundred dollars, right? And so you might be thinking, wow, you spent a hundred dollars, but think about that. 100 DVDs, brand new, never opened. Classic movies, they were a dollar each. 
So on the one hand, spending $100 is a lot. Right? But on the other hand, look at what I got. And so they've been sitting in my garage. I haven't had time to watch them. You know, because I've been watching and doing other things. And I thought to myself, the only way you're going to watch these is if you actually do something active. And so I designed my 100 movies, $100 uh, series. And I've watched one movie per night this entire week. Right? And so it started off with Day of the Locust. And then I did Murphy's War, Heller and Pink Tights, uh, Prime Cut, and The Black Orchid. So if you if you care to, there's um, there's a movie review for each one of them, and I do include clips from the movies. And so that's another problem that I'm having, right? Because I'm I'm coming up with copyright. But I'm like, for example, when I did this final movie, I kept the video clips to under 20 seconds each, and I didn't get hit with copyright. So I'm hoping that's the way to go, right? So, like I said, if you're interested, go ahead and check those out. Um, but I've got a long way to go, right? I've only watched five, and I've got 95 more. But it's been so much fun. And here's another issue, right, which I've talked about before. Like, I'm getting a lot of people from the vinyl community watching my videos. And thank goodness, right? I need that support, and they've been wonderful. But I'm branching out, and I'm putting out videos that are about movies now more than records i'm gonna still do the the music because i love that so i'm just thinking to myself hey um is this a good direction to move in right because you might alienate some of your um you know fan base from the the vinyl community i hope that doesn't happen i hope that everyone's you know either willing to say oh that's a movie video i don't want to watch it or be willing to take a chance. Hey, I like what he has to say about records. Let me listen to what he has to say about movies. And you should, because my reviews are awesome. All right. Um, what have I been listening to? So besides those five albums, which, hey, if you're interested, I'm going to try to put that video out on Sunday. Right, I've been um, listening to this album. Can you see it? It's, I'm kind of close. There we go. I'm doing a, a review on this, and... Um, I've actually only finished doing all the research for side one because, right, this is, uh, this is an album where she covers a lot of other people's music. And so I'm trying to get um, audio and video clips from the people who did it first and then compare her so I get a clip of her and then, you know, talk about the history. So it's actually, it, excuse me, it takes a lot of work to, to do all that. But then I, I made a mistake, right, last weekend... I think it was Sun Monday, right? We have the day off. It was either Sunday or Monday. All right, I went... I, I took a bunch of my records that I didn't want anymore. And I, I, you know, I sold them. And so, of course, when I did that, I went to my local record store. I did that. And, I mean, I got a whole bunch of new records. And so I'll go ahead and show those to you. But a couple of them were really expensive. Like, I'm going to start with the one that I wanted the most. And I got it the last because when I was checking out, I was like, hey... Do you actually have the Chris Isaac um, record store day? And he was like, oh yeah, I have it. And so he went and got it. And and I was like, you know, it's weird because I, I've been, he knows, I go to his store every time there's a record store day. And he's like, oh, this is one of those record store days essentials. That means they just come out at any time. They are not released at, on record store day. So I was like, oh, okay. And I was watching everybody um, show this record off and I was like, uh, I missed it. I'm never going to get a copy. And Chris Isaac is one of my favorites. I have most of his stuff on vinyl. Um, and so I was so happy to get a copy of this. But can you see the price? I, I'm hoping you can see that. If you can't, it's $28, $27.99. And I don't like paying that much for a record. I'm so sorry. I know it's brand new. And this is Chris Isaac, so worth it and then i mean look at that worth it so this is chris isaac and it's on white vinyl right but 28 dollars to pay for a single record that's not even gatefold right that's kind of a lot and i don't mind doing it once in a while right but that's pretty expensive you know i like to keep my record purchases to ten dollars and under but then again i also bought a brand new copy of this I've been, I've had my eye on this for a while, 
and I just finally decided to, to buy it. And this wasn't cheap either, but I just love this cover. There's a couple of early Kiss albums where I absolutely love the covers and I, I wanna keep getting them. And then I bought a bunch of used ones. I bought this one for the cover. This is definitely gonna be new age. I haven't listened to any of these yet. So this one, sorry, this is Liz Story Solid Colors. I think this is Wyndham Hill. Yeah, it is Wyndham Hill, but wow. I just, I really dug that cover. And this one, the cover isn't that great, okay? So I, I kind of, I like this kind of, everyone says it's cheesy, but I really like this kind of orchestral versions of songs. It's just, I do, I like, I'm sorry, I like it. And I usually buy them just for the cover, but this one didn't have that great a cover, but I, I wanted to listen to it. It's got a couple of good songs, like um, it's got the theme from MASH, and um, and just a whole bunch of songs from from like Once Upon a Time. Though it's just these like weird eclectic songs, you know, done orchestra style. So this is what Mancini, um, and so I don't know. I I didn't. I'm not crazy for that cover. It's not horrible. I wouldn't normally buy this because I, I buy them for the covers now. But it had a decent enough cover where I went ahead and bought it and it, it was so cheap, a couple bucks. Um, I bought, this is a single. So this is Thompson Trins. Which one is this, Lay Your Hands On Me? I love that song. Um, so this is the single. So I went ahead and picked that up. I bought this totally for the cover. I haven't listened to it yet. It's called Honk? Does that say honk? I thought it said a horn, but I think it says honk. Seriously, honk? <laughs> so I definitely have to give this a listen, but that's a great cover. And then it's the same cover in like a real picture on the back. Honk? Maybe it's not honk, sorry. There's another one I bought for the cover. I, I thought that was interesting. This is what called Homegrown. Yeah, Homegrown. There's even a cow outside the picture. I don't know, I thought the art was, was nice on that. So I, re I really wanna give that a listen. Okay, this one I could not pass up. This is like gold to me, right? This, no. <laughs> this is treasure in my collection. I don't care if the music on this is crap. That cover, <laughs> that is awesome. Look at them, midnight for two. What does it say? The Three Sons with Pipe Organ. You know what? I actually am amassing uh, quite a big collection of the Three Sons. I think I have at least three other of their other albums. Their albums always have such interesting covers. So I am so happy to add that to my collection. Probably the best one I bought, except for the next one. Yeah, Habibi. Okay, <laughs> this was actually pretty expensive, but I wanted it, so. You're like, what is his problem? Why is he buying that? Come on. This is probably not available on CD. If it is, I'll be surprised. I mean, look at that cover. Look at what's, what is he doing? He's ogling her as she's dancing. <laughs> and yeah, Habibi, if you, if you don't know, it means, hey, lover, but it's also used in many other contexts. How do I know that? I actually lived in um, Saudi Arabia for a couple of years and also Kuwait. All right, so those were my new vinyl purchases. Um, I was just lucky I, I, I bought a bunch. I'm probably gonna go through a vinyl drought soon because I'm not gonna uh, do too much shopping. Um, I think I've covered everything and it's at 29.17. So I'm gonna try to end this before it gets to 30 minutes. So please uh, go ahead and like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Please uh, put any comments you want. I'd love to hear. Thank you for joining me on this Friday night rant of mine, listening to what's going on um, in my life and with my YouTube channel. And I'll see you again next week for some more Friday night chat.